So, welcome back to part two of um, Power BI with Dynamics 365. Um, so, we were actually stuck that we um, actually added last time, so in part one here, this table, we added um, the query a bit that we just removed some, uh, some other columns which we don't need and we actually also uh, just renamed kind of like um, the different kind of dimensions and, well, we were stuck by having this kind of information here, which I'm actually just directly going to delete. Because um, the thing is always, as you can see here at the moment, we have here three kind of uh, numbers. You can basically see it here based on the sigma sign that it is um, a number, which means you can calculate with that. But um, you should actually never use those kind of information to add it in here in a chart because it's kind of like, yeah, of course you would be able to use that and for example the item number to have it, let's say, in a, in a table to see it like that. But uh, it is just not good because um, it would always kind of like go and sum up every row, which every single row, which is actually not, um, not a good way. So you always have to go and um, create a measure actually. So you have to go to data and well it is really simple as, to, as long as it is on the same table you can basically just use the sum function so that you have in the end the measure available with which you can um, calculate. So you can just go here to modeling, so data, modeling and then you measure and Power BI then just creates here a um, new line where you can say let's say total um, Revenue in um, um, account, let's say accounting currency, for example, uh, which means nothing else than the accounting currency is always the MST. So that's just um, an AX um, syntax, which is just always like this. So this means you cannot do just like some, so like in Excel, kind of some and then uh, line amount MST and enter and close the brackets and enter and you do have now here this measure available. You don't see it in here, so in this tail, because it is, um, yeah, it is not a real column, it is calculated. You can basically see it here based on the calculator um, icon that you see there. I do exactly the same for the quantity, so quantity, quantity is equal to sum of quantity sum of f inverse lines quantity, close the brackets, enter. Then you have here the second measure and the third measure, let's say um, total uh, revenue in transaction currency is equal to sum, open the brackets, type line amount, line amount, and close the brackets and enter. So we have those three measures now available. You also see it in the report view. You see those three measures now, which actually means nothing else than you actually don't need those three anymore because you should always uh, use, say if you want to calculate something or see uh, or display any kind of number you always should use measures and never those kind of like um, just lines which are numbers. So which means just right click and hide in report view here exactly the same. Right click, hide in report view and for the quantity as well hide in report view. Perfect. So let's go back here to the report and well let's just say well okay I create a table. Ah, uh, let's say uh, let's say um, um, a matrix. You don't have that one. I will see it show later. So item, item name, and let's say the total revenue in accounting currency. But of course, of course, I don't want to have it like that. So I just quickly go and create um, a table instead of a matrix. Good. And let's add a pie chart with the company and as well. Um, the total amount, yeah. So, uh, which means nothing else, and I can just switch between those two, and the numbers in this table are automatically will be automatically updated based on the filter I added in here. Good so far. Um, 
yeah, let's just quickly rename it because it is quite long. So I just say um, sales, sales, um, or just sales, just sales, and here I rename it to sales in transaction currency. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, as you can see, I can add here, of course, as well, the quantity or just kind of like move the sales here and the quantity there. Good. So, next will be that we actually um, want, <laughs> it is Swiss francs here, but I think it is based on, based on my settings that I just have kind of like said that I am from Switzerland. So, yeah, but anyhow. Good. So, um, now the next thing that we want to do is um, that we also want to have the Cox, so the cost of goods sold, because, um, well, we do have the sales, but in a sales analysis, of course, we do want to have um, at least a margin, um, but even better, you, that we want to have the, the revenue, that we want to have the cost of goods sold, and we want that we want to have the gross profit and the gross profit margin. So, now let's just quickly go back to our data table. So, as you've seen in the first part, it is already filtered in here. So, if I go back to edit query, I can always have a look at all the data I have by just always if I just go back, let's say some steps back where I haven't removed the columns yet, which means I can just search through the table, do I have somewhere kind of like a contribution margin or um, costs of goods sold or something like that within uh, this table. I'm not going to search through it because I know um, it isn't. So um, yeah, as soon as you don't have the information available, um, I'll just close and apply. As soon as you have, don't have the um, information available, you have to search for it. So um, what are you going to do? Well, first of all, you have to go to AX um, and just look where in AX do you find this information. So, well, I just quickly go on to the in onto an invoice, basically. So uh, in the first part, we added actually um, the cost invoice lines. So I just quickly go on this table, so I just go on one which is invoice to be able to see the, the invoice journal and I go to the invoice lines and I just check what kind of information are available in here. And as you can see, well, there is a margin available, so there is kind of like, there is kind of like um, the information available. So let's just quickly right click and click on form information and then cost invoice journal. And then under administration, you see, well, okay, it is, well, the control name is contribution margin, and the, uh, the data source is cost invoice trends, but, and that's the thing, it is not a data field. So, which means it is calculated. So, it is not available on uh, this database table. So, to com for example, just to compare, if I click here on quantity, and then also form name and administration. Then I see here, well, this is a data field within this table. So it is available also in, uh, uh, in, on the table in the SQL Server, which means when I open Power BI, this would be available as a field. The contribution margin or the, uh, the margin itself is actually calculated. So, which means if I go here to inventory and lot transaction, um, then I would find here actually the cost amount. So the contribution margin is basically nothing else than the revenue um, minus the sum or basically plus the sum of all the cost amounts within this sales transaction. So we can we could actually see now, okay, on what kind of like table are we now? And I think it will be either um, invent trends originator or invent trends. So yeah, it is invent trends. So uh, yeah, so which means I would need to go to, um, I would need to make kind of like um, a relation to the invent trends and sum it also up like that. That would be one option. A second option is always kind of like to search for a view where someone else who um, programmed AEX already did it and make it for us easier to basically um, to basically use that information. So one thing I always do is basically just go through the table browser. So I just go on the table browser here. As I said, it's um, an add-in which you can download. And I search just for cost invoice trends or cost invoice. Just something that sounds um, at least similar to, I just type in cost invoice trends, something that sounds similar to the facts table that we already have. So 
it's just going to show me now all the oh, it didn't sorry I'll just quickly go back because invoice trans trans and search yeah okay sorry let's do it <laughs> differently uh, just quickly go back here click just table list and yeah table list and then cost invoice trans and then you see all the tables and views that are that are kind of like available in AX that are that have this name. So we already added cost invoice trends and we have cost invoice trends IN for India, so definitely not definitely not for us. Interest that as well, not Russia, as well, not W um, as well not. Um, you see here based on the icons, those are all tables. We are now we have now here one which is which has a, another icon which is nothing else than uh, this is a view. So we have the cost invoice trans Dependent. So, which means nothing else than someone created a view based on um, tables or a table um, within AX. And it is also available in the SQL Server, so you can also connect actually to those views. Which means nothing else than we can just have a look at this view to see what is available on this view. And as you can see, we already have here the cox available so we have some we have some uh, sales invoice lines so basically it is nothing else than uh, exactly the cost invoice lines table but just with some more information like the product category which is for example i think not available on the cast the cost invoice trends directly and as well the cox amount which is here in the first column available so what do we want to do? We actually just want to add cost invoice trans as well into our cost invoice trans expanded as well into our query in here, or in our in our um, into our relationship thing. So which means we just have to add this table. So how to do it? Well, quite simple. We just get data. Uh, depending on how you connect to your database, if it is um, online, then it would be, then you just have to use here the Dynamics 365 online. Since I'm on a virtual machine where I do have my things uh, local available, I just connect over the SQL database. I have to type in again the name, which is um, min int. Int, min int t e eight eight m twenty eight and the database ax db and I click on OK and it takes a while till it loaded all these things and I can or I should be able then to search in here for cost cost invoice cost invoice trans perfect and as you can see here I see this view here are the icons for views are the two tables and the custom was trans which was the table that we already added in here so I just tick here this um, tick and click on load and power bi yeah power bi is now going to load the information from the cost in was trans expanded into the in memory database so which means I do have the all the information from cost invoice trans expanded as well available in my in memory as in memory basically so yeah and as you can see I am loading some hundred thousand of data uh, it's also going just to load um, just copy basically the whole table without any relationships so I also don't have any relationships yet but if I would have relationships uh, it doesn't recognize them it's just kind of like make a copy of um, the table one to one so perfect so what happened 
So um, Power BI actually just added here the new table and as you can see it already made a connection. So it already made the relationship, the relation between um, the cost invoice trans and the cost invoice trans expanded. Why that? Well, uh, yeah, it is not that intelligent. So it actually it didn't it didn't went to the SQL uh, to the SQL database and checked there the connection. Uh, it definitely didn't. Uh, it the only thing it did was well it checked what kind of fields or columns do I have here available, and he found well I do have here a rec ID, and on the cost in with trans expanded uh, I also have here a rec ID. So I just connect uh, um, this with that and make some checks well on which table or is a rec ID several the same rec ID several times available, and he realized well nowhere is the rec ID two times available. So I just make a one to one connection. Which is actually in this case, since I am using a, um, a view which is based on the cost invoice trans, um, correct. But of course, most often uh, those relations that uh, Power BI is doing automatically is um, aren't correct at all. So, but for this case, it actually works quite good. You can always check if the relation is working or not just by, well, go to a report because now you have, of course, this table available. Choose any kind of thing i just choose for example due date for the moment for the moment and um i use sales and as soon as you see something coming in here then you know okay well at least the standard relation should uh, work but yeah so i just quickly delete it and i go back to the relation good we do now exactly the same thing as we did the last time so Always, if you have um, a new table in there, um, just get rid of all the data that you don't need. So I just go here to the data, choose um, cost invoice trans expanded, um, click on edit query. Now I'm in Power Query, choose here cost invoice trans expanded. Um, good. And I just go again through all the columns um, and think about the things which I need. Since I have quite a lot of information already available from the cost invoice lines, which I've called F invoice lines, um, I actually just want to have the COX amount. So, which means I do search, I'm searching for the COX amount, which should be somewhere available here. Perfect. So I just say right click and as always I put it to the beginning. And the important thing is since I made a relation um, between the two rec IDs, I should not delete the rec ID of course. So I also move the rec ID here to the beginning. So always the first step, all the fields you are going or all the columns that you want to use, um, just put it to the beginning. And then I choose this one, I go to the end, choose that one, right click, remove columns and they are gone and I just have the cox and the, the rec ID. Um, for the cox as well, not decimal number, let's use fixed decimal number, of just the currency one, so that again Swiss francs is showing in my case. And then I can click on close and apply and Power BI is now going to um, amend all the changes I did on my query, on all the 300,000 um, data. And of course I forgot something which I just go, um, which I'm going to do right now. So as you can see now just those two things are here available. And since I also said I just want to have the two companies USMF and uh, DEMF I also do exactly the same thing in here. Um, as you see now, I can't actually do I can't do actually the filter because um, it is not anymore available. So what do I have to do? Well, I just have to go back to the place where I haven't removed the columns yet. So I removed it here. So here they are gone. One step back, they are back again. I go to data area. ID I think the best one would be data area ID without hashtag yeah so this one also right click move to beginning 
Um, yeah, okay. Now, as you can see, um, it is going to say, well, okay, I, I am going to uh, insert a step um, a step somewhere in between so I would add it here which doesn't make sense because the column is then already removed so I just quickly cancel it and just quickly delete these kind of steps again say yeah delete and also the change type I also quickly delete but yeah and a search again for the data area ID which is here right click I move to the beginning I have it in the beginning I change here the type to fixed yep perfect I can say it depend it actually doesn't matter when you're going to delete the things out but I add now the filter here so I said load more I say well just load DEMF and USMF no other company click on OK he added here the filter so filter rows then I click on that one and I click on the last one with shift also hold shift right click and remove columns he added this step close and apply and Power BI is now has now um, updated this information perfect okay so um, yeah next would be that we are going to add the cox so we do want to have the cox the cox um, here as well but well as you can see first of all it is on a separate table and it is also with a sigma sign so um, as I said before um, that's not that good so what we are going to do is actually we are going to move the cox onto our facts table because um, yeah it is always quite good to have it to have to have all the information you need on your facts table that we can, that we are actually even able to um, hide this table here because you don't need any kind of information so how to do it well we can go back to um, yeah to the data and we are going on to the F invoice lines and we say well either either we can say we are going to add a new column um, and then we can say so we can say a new column and then we can say well okay um, Cox is equal to related so I can say related related and then I can say well okay I want to have the Cox and then I would have then I would have here the Cox available um, directly as um, a new column on my uh, facts table but we are not going to do it like that so I just quickly delete it again because Basically, every kind of column that you are going that you would add would yeah would need kind of like space. So um, he would basically save then all these kind all the cocks. Um, of course, it is column based, but it would actually save um, the cocks two times, which is not which is not um, the thing how it should be. So this means nothing. As we are going to create directly a measure, but we are going to calculate uh, the cocks based on a separate table, which means. There is a, a DEX expression that we can use, which is called sum x. So, um, well, of course, I need to say cox amount, or just cox. Cox is equal to, and then we can use the DEX function sum x. So, yeah, good. Sum x. It is quite similar to Excel. So, if you are basically used to Excel, then you always see exactly the same things here. So, table. So, on which table you want to add the sum? X. Of course, we want to add it on our facts table, so we can say F invoice lines, and then semicolon, and then we need the expression. So for the expression, let's just quickly say we want to round. So it is kind of like Excel. So round, open brackets, and now instead of using a VLOOKUP, uh, since we already have the relation, so Power BI knows exactly. Mm, just quickly click Ctrl and X. So Power Power BI, of course, knows exactly how they are connected. So instead of using in in in, in an Excel, you would you know, use um, a VLOOK up to say, well, okay, um, based on the rec ID, uh, take the Cox amount, which is of course in Power BI not necessary because you can just use the function related. So yeah, if you use related, open the brackets, then directly all the related 
tables and related fields um, will show up here. So as you can see, what do we want to uh, make? So we want to make um, a sum. We want to show as a sum x, or we want to make a sum. We want to show it on our facts table. Um, text table invoice lines, we want to round it on two digits and we want to use or sum up the cox from the cost invoice trans expanded. So I just double click on it, close the brackets and then I am in the round function, so like in Excel, semicolon again, uh, two digits, close the brackets and close the brackets and click enter and it says the um, Cox is already available. Choose a different name, so I say Cox new. Why ever he thinks that Cox is available? I don't think that is just one second Cox. So and ah okay, maybe it's really because of that. Okay, let's call it. Oh, let's do it like that. Cox2 and I rename that one, I say um, Cox um, and so on, that's the whatever and I just say here then Cox. Okay, so now it is working. So I do have now this measure here available and actually as I said I do have all the information from the cost in was trans expanded now available here on our facts table. So I actually don't need this table anymore anywhere so I so to, doesn't need to be shown so I can just say right click hide in report view and yeah that's basically all so if I go back to the report I don't have um, the, this table available so it is less confusing less confusing for the user because you just see here our facts table so and as I said now we can say well I just click in here I do want to have the cox as well and so it is all ready working. So I already have sales and I have cox. Now of course what else do we want to have? So we want to have um, gross profit and we want to have gross profit margin. So let's go back here to the data, add new measures. I can say well okay I call it gross just GP. GP is equal to and then um, another expression always if you want to make any kind of calculation with existing measures so which with existing uh, things that have here kind of like this calculator icon you just need to use the this kind of like special brackets with um, however they are called <laughs> so um, cross profit so it's of course uh, sales minus and then again the bracket and cox and whoops and close it and enter and we have it in here and then normal calculation let's say gp percent which is equal to bracket gross profit times 100 divided by brackets sales and enter and now here's also the thing so if you would so if you would not use kind of like um, a calculation for the gross profit percentage so if you would use a column uh, then well it would actually just kind of like go and sum the things up so it would say well okay if you have one times 70 percent margin and one times 40 percent margin then uh, if you would kind of like sum it up then you would have 110 um, percent margin in total which is of course not correct so always for percentages um, or basically always for any kind of like amount that you want to show within your illustrations always uh, create such measures. Good and now we can go back to our report view and we can say well okay, we also want to have the gross profit and the gross profit percent in there and if we make it a bit bigger then we have already this information here available. So perfect this was part two I would say we are going to move on and it is, it is definitely getting um, more and more funny and more and more fan fancier and fancier the whole thing so we are we are also going to add financial dimensions quite soon we are going to add customer uh, informations and so on so I hope uh, you enjoyed this part two and I hope I see you in part three bye